So what should you do with the pulp? All right. My suggestion is is come to peace with the fact that you're not using the pulp and do something constructive with it. If you garden, what I do, I put it on my garden. Uh, I don't do that all winter long, but when the weather's nice, I go out there and put it out there. All right. Um, if you have flowers, you could use it as a fertilizer, right? There's still some stuff in there. You're going to put humus in the soil. It'll be good. There's still stuff in there. So that's what I would do with it. Um, I do sometimes put it down in the garbage disposal. That's okay. You didn't, like, commit a crime against nature by doing that, all right? It's better than anything else that went down those drain pipes so that you have healthier drain pipes down there. So um, that's what I would do. All right. Hey, did I get keep mm -hmm. yeah. 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 There must be some timer here that I'm not aware of. I do that. Okay, so once you got, if your purpose is to juice, once you've juiced, you've gotten a value out of it. So it's not like you didn't get your money's worth if you wasted the pulp, right? <laughs> All the good stuff you're really trying to get out came out, so you didn't waste your money by throwing the pulp out, okay? Um, I, I've talked to people who said they did stuff with the pulp. If you want to do that, if you're a very frugal, <coughs> economical kind of person, I'm kind of like that too, but I'm over it. Um, just <laughs> you know, bake pancakes, don't fall for whatever you want to do. I'm not really going to talk about that tonight. So if you want to look at stuff, you know, be creative or read about that or something like that. All right. Um, so when you eat a fruit or a vegetable, I mean, if you go over here, you look at these things. Um, we all know they're made up of cells, right? So where are the actual nutrients, the stuff your body is actually going to get energy from, or going to get healthy from? Um, in the roughage or the fiber. That's not where it comes from. That's the stuff that comes out the other end when it's left over. It's all the stuff that's inside those cells that is really what you need. That's what we're deficient in. That's what we've been missing. We don't have enough of that. So um, I'll talk about that a little bit more here. But when you typically, I say we took that parsley and we chewed it up and we swallowed it, right? I, people who study this, I haven't counted, but people that I've read who've studied this stuff would say about 20% of the cells typically get broken open and have you know the stuff come out of them. Um, if you looked at the other stuff that went through, the cells are pretty much still intact there. They didn't get broken open. They didn't release the nutrients in there. Um, so um, I'll talk about something on the next slide too. But um, when you're, those go through your body, your body actually basically juices them on its own to get the nutrients. So if you put a cell in there or a bunch of fibrous stuff with some cells involved in that, your body has enzymes and digestive juices and acids and stuff that are going to start to break open those cells um, to get the nutrients out. So really your body is doing that anyway and then the rest of that you know, fiber and pulp is going to go through and come on out. But the stuff that's in there is going to come out, it will get absorbed and actually be beneficial to your body. So um, you can read that there. Basically the point of that is saying that if you chew your food better, you're going to get more nutrients out of it. Now, I don't think people in our culture, we typically chew our food well enough. So when you're eating regular food, it is a good idea to chew it a lot more thoroughly. You will get more nutrients than that. Here's where juicing comes in. When they study you know, doing something like juicing or maybe even using a, a, a high-powered blender that really breaks stuff very well, you're probably getting closer to 80% of the cells actually broken and having stuff released in there. So you're getting four times the efficiency on your food compared to just chewing it like you usually do and swallowing it, right? So juicing does that mechanical breaking down very, 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 very well. It does it prior to it going into your body. So it's really just assisting that natural process there. Um, that's a picture of some actual plant cells, right? So there's a wall, there, there's, a, there's a border around it, and then they're stuck together with a fibrous type of a matrix, right? They're, they're, they're kind of tough. And until those cell walls actually get split open, you know, you have a those are two-dimensional, but a three-dimensional cell has a wall all the way around it. Until that thing actually gets punctured and broken open, um, you don't get anything out of it. It's just going to pass through there. So when you do that juicing, it's going to break those out. All that little green stuff, that's like the chlorophyll in there, just like you have red blood cells. The plants have chlorophyll. That's where all this stuff is in there, the enzymes, the chlorophyll. All these nutrients are inside those cells. All right. Another issue on the fiber is people have probably heard of soluble fiber and insoluble fiber, right? So what does soluble mean? That's going to go kind of be absorbed into the fluid and that type of thing. Insoluble is not going to get mixed in with the fluid. So the soluble fiber, you are going to get in the juice. And you actually see when we juice tonight, you're going to have like a fluid type of a layer. And then you're going to have a solid type of a layer. Um, so all that, that solid 
um, fibrous, um, the soluble fiber stuff is still in there. It's the, the roughage, the non-soluble fiber that's going to get passed through. So you are getting fiber um, in there, you're just not getting as much of the um, insoluble fiber in it. So what's in the juice that's so good for you? Uh, I'm going to go over a few things. The first is water, right? Don't overlook the obvious. I know uh, Dr. Mills has probably taught a lot of you the plant analogy, right? If, if you went and you're walking out by your flowers and you saw a plant that's wilted, what's the first thing you would think maybe to do to it to see if it got better? To put water on it, right? Mm -hmm. How much of your body is made of water? You've probably heard different numbers, maybe 70%, something like that. So if your body is 70% water, if you're mostly water, um, and then you eat a diet that's mostly flour and mostly cooked stuff, and it really doesn't have much water in it, you're constantly dehydrating the body. And it's literally, you literally, your body's going to have to pull water out of its own reserves to even hydrate that stuff enough to get it to mix enough to even go through your intestines. So it really is very dehydrating. So water, you know, if you can eat a diet that has foods or fruits or vegetables that are maybe 70% water, that's what you are, you're 70%. So you need to think about eating water-based fruits and vegetables. If you can just get that in your brain and do that, you'll, you'll go a long way for your health, all right? Think of the effect of, in your intestine or in your body, of eating like an orange or a cucumber versus eating flour or a pancake or some pizza dough or something like that, right? When that orange goes in there, there's all that juice in there. Um, it's going to go down there, it's already hydrated, it's already mixed up, your body really just has to kind of pour the nutrients out. Whereas if you eat a bunch of flour, now it goes in there, and now you have this real dry stuff down inside a hollow tube in your intestine. And what has to happen? Your body has to find some way to hydrate it into a reasonable pasty form to then start to act on it and hopefully pull some nutrients out into your intestines, right? Well, if your diet is all of that stuff all the time for years and years and years, which um, uh, the average American diet is, and the government even recommends, or until recently, six to eleven servings of grain a day, um, all, all dehydrated foods, right? Um, it's going to be very stressful in your body and dehydrating to your body. 